If you want to use ETM Embedded Trace Macro Cell with the IR Embedded Workbench, you have to enable uh, the ETM settings. The IR iJet Trace, that is a powerful trace probe, uh, can be used uh, with the DK boards, for example, that have support for ETM. And in order to make use of this feature, it's straightforward. We need uh, to start the Synergy standalone uh, configurator. And we need to make sure that we enable the trace pins. So this is uh, straightforward. Once you go to the pin tab under peripherals, you should have the trace peripherals. And you need to make sure that the trace it's uh, enabled so the default pins should be fine so once this is completed once the ETM pins for trace are enabled you only need to generate uh, the project and you can close the configurator and uh, these settings will be transferred to your current project notice that not all uh, synergy devices uh, support trace make sure to uh, verify on the datasheet if your device has support for embedded trace macro cell. So once this is completed, uh, we need, of course, to change here the debugger driver. So we need to change it to iJet JTAG Jet. And additionally, uh, we suggest to change here the trace collection mode to parallel embedded trace macro cell. So this uh, should be enough. Once uh, this is uh, complete, we can just connect to the target. So once uh, we connect uh, to the target, in order to make sure that uh, the trace is working fine, we have here on the left side, of course, first we need to open the ETM trace window and we need to make sure that it's enabled. And once this is ready, you can click here on the left side on the top and you can check if you are getting the clock. If you are getting the clock frequency, it means that you configured the pins correctly. And from here, once you start uh, the debugging session, and we can of course also use a timeline with call stack and the interrupt log, I will leave this application running for a while. And once I stop uh, the application, I get uh, all uh, the trace information. And from here, if I just double click here on the line, I can uh, go backwards. So you have full control here on every instruction that has been executed. So this means in this case, if you are investigating a bug, you have at least 32 mega samples of instructions available. So you can figure out what was going on. The timeline is also important because once you have this information on timeline and of course, of course, you have to adjust a bit the zooming here. So from uh, the zooming, what you can get is exactly, exactly here the call stack uh, correlated to the interrupt lock. So once we start to uh, improve the zooming here, you can see that we had uh, a few uh, functions being called here, uh, the thread itself uh, and so on. And then we have the cystic and then the cystic handler and the timer interrupt. So this is uh, the graphical representation on what you have available, but it makes the investigation of bugs uh, much easier. So you can always have the last 32 mega samples of uh, trace available. And additionally, of course, uh, you can also use some specific cases. So for example, here we can toggle a start breakpoint and next we could toggle a stop breakpoint. So this means we will only collect the instructions that have been executed between uh, these lines. So if you are already aware on which on, on the part that uh, the bug is uh, happening, so you can uh, try to uh, make it shorter or smaller uh, the instruction that you need to investigate and in the source code. So this is really powerful, really straightforward to use. You only need to have an iJet trace probe available and also make sure that you are enabling the ETM pins on your board when you are connecting to the target.